Scarpins Avenue. My name is Bob the Drag Queen. And I'm Money Exchange. And this is Sibling Rivalry. This week, we discuss turf wars. We have our assistants on the podcast. And we find out what made Bob say this. My name is Christopher Delmar Caldwell. Who sounds whiter than me? And we find out what made Monet say this. I mean, I would choose Nicki Minaj if we were fighting uh, a a fucking turf war in Brooklyn. And we find out what made Kennedy say this. There is an expiration date to outfits, and sometimes queens will not acknowledge them. And we find out what made Patty say this. You know, I do a thing. I like to leave stuff all over the place. I think that psychologically, it's so that people won't forget that I'm there or forget me. Ma, I feel like I haven't seen you. Well, I did see you two days ago, but it feels like longer. <laughs> I'm very grateful that it's been two days. I, I almost saw you today, but um, I had some better shit to do. What did you? What did you? What the hell did you have to do? I recorded a podcast with another friend of mine that was lovely. Wait, so you have another podcast? Mm-hmm. Well, what podcast were you on? Ellis. The podcast is called Ellis? No, it's my friend Ellis who lives in Atlanta. Okay, bitch, what's the podcast? Uh, is it, I don't know the names, so don't ask. Red, <laughs> red clocks, clock. You was trying to go all around Ellis. You know, my friend, Ellis, girl... You know Ellis po- how Ellis podcast be girl. Can I, tell, can I tell you this? <laughs> Go ahead. When I when I was in um, high school, I sat next to this girl in Spanish class all year long. I mean, the entire year I sat next to this bitch, but I could I just never knew her name. You know, you know someone too long, and then it's too late to ask their name. Oh, one hundred percent. I've been in that situation so many times. It's always awkward. There's nothing you can do to fix it. And then you then you get another friend and try to get the friend who doesn't know the friend to ask her the name. And then your friend fucks yes. it up. And then you. Yeah. So what I did was I was like, okay, I don't know her name, so I'm gonna ask her if I can borrow her book. So I was like, can I borrow your book? I don't know how kids do it. I don't even know if kids still have books these days. In the front of the book, you would write your name. So you would yeah. see. Do, 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 I don't know if people still do that in high school or not, but you would see everyone who's owned your book like for years ahead of you. So I remember opening the book, like, work, got it. See her name. At the end of that, I said, Ashley, thank you so much. And she was like, I'm sorry, excuse me? <laughs> I was like, Ashley? And she was like, my name's not Ashley. And I was like, but your book? And she goes, I'm borrowing Ashley's book. And I was like, work. I you know, like, what? oftentimes when we are at gigs, Patty and I often find ourselves in the um, Miranda Priestley and um, Andy Sachs where we're, oh, we're at the someone. Book. Uh, we're, we're, we're at someone and then and I'm like, Patty, I have no idea what that is, what that is. And then Patty will like talk to them to get the name. And I'll be like, yeah, Jane, anyway. <laughs> so crazy, Patty's like, Jane. This, this is Amanda. She's from Teen Vogue. She interviewed you for the uh, All Stars piece. Literally, Go. though. Oh, literally my God. Though. Amanda from Teen Vogue. <laughs> We so did that real. thing together. I miss you so much. All right, on your left, you have uh, Teresa. She works at VH1. Wait, She's have you, have you, have you the... ever watched? You, you've watched you, Devil Wears Prada doesn't seem like something that would be very Bob the Drag Queen to watch. Money. <laughs> what? How? Because you. Okay, now you're going to act like you're not the most, like, you're like, you know, it just doesn't speak to me. You have said that about so many movies in the past. I don't even, but I can't even what count. about Devil Wears Prada? I, that is such, it's, it's my favorite well, uh, street movie. You're not someone who doesn't, you're not, you're not, you don't particularly care about fashion, like, in terms of, like, name brands like that. Are you trying to read me right no, now? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just not trying to, like, Bob, you're not, like, a name brand. You don't, you're, you're not, like, someone who, like, ooh, Gautier did this in the fall of 2016. No, I'm, I'm not a name brand person, but I, but I like fashion. I'm just not into labels. I don't define myself with labels. Well, no one does. Also, I, so... Today, we are going to um, bring our assistants into the chat later, and we're in a big Facebook chat, and Kennedy has the most ridiculous filters going on. I can't even focus. <laughs> well, she, uh, Kennedy, stop doing... <laughs> and Patty just quietly sitting there wishing this was over. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I love... I, love try, I really love Devil Wars Prada. I think it's a really... I mean, it's an it's iconic. I mean, do you know the monologue by heart? Oh, bitch, I have it in like two numbers. I have like right, three of the monologues in my numbers. I, um, which which one are we doing again? I, like, start it um, off for me. 
Oh, I see. You think this has nothing to do with you. You, you go to your closet and select, oh, I don't know. That, that, uh, that lovely blue sweater, for instance, because you're trying to tell someone that you care about what you put on your back, but what you don't know is that that... No, is he already shit. fucked up. Because you're trying to tell you the way you take yourself too seriously to care about what you put on your back, but you don't realize that color's not actually blue. It's not lapis. Lapis is not cerulean. turquoise. It's actually... No, you missed turquoise. It's actually cerulean. I know the I whole thing. I believe should. No, it's, it's, yeah, it's one of the things where you know it once you're doing it. Yeah, once um, you're doing it. But yeah, that, I mean, I, girl, that is one of my, I am, that is such a fucking good, I fucking yeah. love that movie. Meryl Streep is just a great actress. Ha, okay, have you ever seen Big, well, have Unpopular you Unpopular opinion, Meryl Streep's a great actress. <laughs> I'm <laughs> different. You, I think Meryl Streep is really great. Have you seen Big Little Lies? No, I never seen she it live. She is so funny fucking good in Big Little Lies. There's, there's a scene and it's, it's, it's been a meme now when she just starts to scream at the dinner. She's like, ah! It's like, the, it, she is so crazy. My but favorite is probably, uh, well, I, I have two favorite things that I really love about Meryl Streep. Also, Jacob's like, I wanted you to watch Big Little Lies. I, I, I will watch Big Little Lies. I just don't like the name of that show. It doesn't sound like a good name for a show. See, see, lies. see, this some Bob shit. It just, it just doesn't speak to me so I'm just not going to watch it. That, that literally, what I said earlier, you literally just did. But anyway, um, you need to see her in um, uh, August Osage County, where there's a great scene where Julia Roberts has a fight scene with Meryl Streep. How many folks can say, today I film my fight scene? Who, who gets up, gets dressed for work and go, today I film my fight scene with Meryl Streep? <laughs> um, and also, um, there is a really great, um, what do you call it? Um Oh, in uh, in uh, Angels in America, the I mean, you don't even. Have to, I mean, first of all, watch the whole thing is really brilliant and great. But if you can't watch the whole thing, you need to see the like the opening, like what do you call it, scene of Angels in America, where she basically comes in and is like, she plays this old rabbi, like a really really old rabbi. It's fucking, mm-hmm. it's insane. Like you don't even realize it's Meryl Streep. Until they roll the credits. And you're like, oh shit, that was Meryl Streep the whole time. Meryl Streep is a, who do you think is the black Meryl Streep? And I know I hate saying like the black of that, but I'm saying like, who is, who it is our... It doesn't seem like you hate it. You really enjoyed <laughs> saying it just now. Who is our, who is the black equivalent? Or who is, you know, who is the black Meryl Streep? Well, there's so many, I mean, obviously, I mean, I can't believe you're asking this question. Is it because, Cecily Tyson? No, okay, okay, Cecily, okay, Meryl Streep's not that old. <laughs> In my um, mind, it's, she is. It's Viola Davis. No, Viola Davis. Meryl Streep is regarded as one of the best act as the best actor in Hollywood, and I feel like Viola Davis is also regarded as one of the best actors in Hollywood. She's insanely talented. I Name agree with that. Two actors better than Viola Davis right now. Quick, Angela Bassett. Angela Bassett to me is one of the greatest black actresses of all time. Period. Yeah, she's yeah. Angela Bassett is great. I'm not discrediting Angela Bassett as an as a great actor. All I'm saying is Meryl Streep. I mean, Viola Davis is that bitch. Been that bitch. Stay that bitch. Did you see Fences? I did not see Fences. No, I did not. All right, you're not black. Work. Um, well, did I, see... I didn't watch Fences because it's one of those movies, right, where they weren't like the the acting was like in the play, like it was very like Shakespeare. I don't like that. And it's not an iambic pentameter. What do you mean? Like the way that they spoke, I and I I thought they spoke I, okay. like it, it was. It, 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 is it a period? Yes, it is a period piece, but it's not like the seven. It's like nineteen fifty something. Yeah. Oh, it's not, I thought that Fences was was a play that they set to Shakespeare text. No, I no, I no. It is it, it is um civil rights era, but it's not like no. You need to watch God. Fences. It is okay. really great. Maybe I'll watch it and I'll do a, a Patreon about it. Have Have you seen? Uh, the I'm watching it with fence. you. It's, it's going to be a Silver Rivalry Patreon because we both. We, I'm <laughs> signing up for this one. It is uh, so have, good. It's so good. Have you good. seen Queen and Slim? Queen and Slim is such a good movie. It's so I'll good. Watch it. I'll watch it. I need to watch The Time Traveler's Wife and Queen and Slim. Oh my god, The Time Traveler's Wife! I cry every time. I see. It is so like Rachel McAdams. I'm sorry, she's like my Meryl Streep. I just love Major Rachel McAdams. She's so so. She's just so listen, good. I've been doing these uh, gay generals on my uh, on my uh, Twitter page. So I, I had all these divas listed, and people picked the gay general. Who do you think won for the gays? Uh, for the gay, I mean, you 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 give me the four options because you put four options up there. Don't, no, don't we put us- like, it were like twenty people, but the it 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 ended 
with two people. It was um, Lady Gaga versus Nicki Minaj. Oh, Lady Gaga. Of course, the faggot shows Gaga. But it wasn't like a huge landslide victory. And now I'm in... So I just did the lesbian army today. And... Um, well, the gays don't fuck was, with Ellen no more. So it's going to be Kate, Kate McKinnon. Oh, Ellen got kicked out quick, <laughs> fast, and in a hurry. Kate Someone McKinnon. commented, having Ellen here is, is homophobic. <laughs> oh, my God. People are so quick. To, I mean... D- Eh, damn, Ellen been fighting for rights since the fucking mid '90s, and we're like, now we're like, fuck that bitch, and we hate her. Listen, I agree. Ellen, Ellen's done a lot of great things for the queer community. Anyway, the top three are Jodie Foster, AOC, and oh, yeah. wait, j- wait, time out. She's time not out. gay, but she's she. Uh, listen, oh. also everyone who Nicki Minaj isn't gay, but she's the gay general. Well, you know, Nicki Minaj was on that. Uh, I was bi, but I'm not anymore. And I said it back then, just so I could make headlines. I was like, "Well, she ain't no faggot, and she's leading the faggot, gen- the faggot army." Okay, well, she was anyway. So it's I mean, AOC, we Jodie Foster, war... and Queen Latifah. Who do you think? Who do you think's winning? Oh, Queen Latifah. Okay, that's the crazy thing. It is so close. It is like neck and neck between Queen Latifah and AOC. I didn't realize this. I asked Kennedy, who is um, of the lesbian persuasion from time to time. I mean, technically she identifies as pansexual, me too, but I still say I'm gay. It's easier for conversation, whatever, that's the point. So she was like, go ahead and do Queen Latif- uh, do AOC. And I was like, she won't win. A- AOC is holding her own against Queen Latifah. Oh, I I'm voting Queen AOC. Latifah. I'm going Queen Latifah, too. I mean, I would choose Nicki Minaj if we were fighting uh, a, fu- a fucking turf war in Brooklyn. But if we're doing a fucking a oh, war... I'm sorry, a turf war in Brooklyn? Yes, bitch. What is a turf war? You don't know what a turf war is? What is what, it, oh, it's what just is, like, 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 oh, like, like a drug thing. No, it's not a drug thing. Turf is turf is land. What are you talking about? What is turf? But I assume if you're fighting a turf war so you can gain this turf. Right, so there are segments of Brooklyn that are that were really getting together. When when I was in middle school, it was like it was like. But uh, a turf Marine war Park. is to gain land. So if Bed Stuy is versus Bensonhurst, Bed Stuy is not going to spread if if they, if they win. The- but that's how turfs work. You fight for the you you fight for that turf, and if you win, you call it all Bed Stuy now. Money. I don't think that's true. I think turf wars are typically like a drug dealer from one area, or a or a person who is has a business or something in one area is battling a person from a business in another area. And if it's drug dealers, we're both fighting for this corner, and whoever wins now owns this corner. Well, turf war is not a single definition. Like you, can, drug dealers fight for turf. Fucking uh, uh, countries fight for for land, aka turf. Like turf war is. Yeah, like, but what like, I'm saying is all that stuff story, is happening. You can West fight for land, is literally but when a turf you, war. No, you can fight for land, but you're saying you just now get to call Benson Hurst bed That's not how that works. But so what if there's yes, a turf war is. between uh what if there's a turf war between people in Fordham in in the Bronx and people in Brooklyn? Now do we just get to call Fordham uh Brooklyn? Yes, we can be like, okay, so if Brooklyn won the war, this is all Brooklyn now. This is Brooklyn and New and, and New Brooklyn. Monet <laughs> What just say so, you're wrong. Just say I'm not wrong. No, a turf war is to gain the land. You're crazy. Exactly. So when you fight and you win, you get the land. The land is yours. Like colonization was a turf war, bitch. Okay, money. I see you reading uh, <laughs> Patty's text that he's sending you. We're in the same group that the group. That, but it's not. It doesn't have to be about drugs. What I'm saying is. In I never said you said that. You said it was about drugs. I never said drugs. No, I said it can be about drugs, but it can't just be about calling a neighborhood something different because Bed Stuy isn't actually spreading. Yeah, but when you take it over, you're a, you're 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 getting that land. Like, like, are you crazy? Wait, so you're telling me that? So what? Bed, what turf war has Bed Stuy won against? There who? has not. Been, there has not been a turf war between Bed. So there Bed-Stuy. are no turf wars in Brooklyn. No, I'm saying there has not been like okay. When I say turf, not like a a a, a legal a legal like turf war. I mean like bitches from Marine Park were fighting bitches from fucking Sheepshead, and then they would fight over this big park in the middle. Whoever won the war, they'd be like, oh, this is now 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 this is all Sheepshead, and then a, a few months later they would fight again. And, okay, like, okay, now now this is all Marine Park. Like that's how it went down. That's okay, a turf but war. What, but what neighborhood is the park in? The park is in. It's on Flatbush. I mean, it's it's on Fillmore Avenue, Fillmore Road. And so when I, when Bed Stuy wins the fight, do they send out like a message to real estate agents no one and say, "When you go to this area said, now, 
Sheep's Head and Marine Park are neighboring are are, are neighboring vill villages. What am I gonna say? Villages <laughs> are neighboring places, territories. They like right side by side, and the park is kind of in the middle of it. So they fight over whose park it is. I have to take your word for it. In Atlanta, we don't act like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because y'all are so fucking demure in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, we are. We're gonna bring in um, our assistants after this break. Let's take a break. <laughs> Girl, we're definitely living through some crazy times now, and we're all a little on edge. And I found that great CBD really, really, really helps me relieve stress and relax. After a long day of getting in makeup, walking in heels, twirling, tumbling, doing splits, something you can't do, having a little bit of CBD really helps the pain and soreness from all those hours of drag. Listen, everyone deserves a simple way to feel better, and they provide just that. Unlike CBD oils, Caliper CBD powder is completely tasteless, and it mixes easily into any food or drink. You love food and drinks. There's no weird taste, there's no oily residue, or like that weird feeling in your mouth, and each packet of Caliper has precisely 20 milligrams of CBD in it, so you always know exactly how much you're getting. There's no guesswork. Mm -hmm. Caliper is a CBD product that's clinically proven to be superior to standard CBD oils. It's clinically proven that you absorb 450% more CBD with Caliper CBD powder compared to tinctures. And Caliper gives you all the benefits of CBD in just 15 minutes, ma'am. About twice as fast as CBD oil. Caliper CBD comes in affordable 10 and 30 count packs. You can get started for under $20. Oh my God, that's so inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Individual packets give you the benefit of CBD wherever you go. Easy traveling packets, honey, help you relieve stress, release pain and soreness, make you sleep easier at night, wherever you go. Unlike some products out there, Caliper is completely THC free. All the goodness of CBD with no high. All natural, no GMO ingredients, no fillers, added chemicals, or artificial flavors. Yeah, I just like getting high on life, you know that? Exactly. Get 20% off your first order when you use promo code RIVALRY at tricaliper.com slash RIVALRY. You can try Caliper CBD risk-free for 30 days. If you don't love it, they'll give you a full refund. Tricaliper.com slash RIVALRY. Don't forget, promo code RIVALRY for 20% off your first order. Well, I'm black. <laughs> that is such a great line. But guess who's black in the house isn't work. Um, no, no, no. I, I will reiterate. I think we. I don't know if we said this on the podcast or in real life. I think guess who's black in the house is a great interest line. I didn't like the noise you made after you said it. Okay. So if you went guess who black in the house, but you went guess who black in the house. Ooh. <laughs> and I, it, 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 it ruined it. It's a no for me. Um, speaking of ruined, we have one of the shadiest. Don't call Patty that. I'm oh, talking about Kennedy. Patty is lightly Patty is, lightly used. Kennedy. <laughs> Patty is sweet <laughs> and kind and lovely. <laughs> Kennedy is a mean old. She's a mean old line. <laughs> so we have our assistants here. I'm here with uh, uh, Kennedy Warner. Hello. And we have Patrick Scott Miner. My full government name. Yes, yeah. full government, bitch. <laughs> yeah, Kennedy Jacob Warner. I'm scared. What is your middle name, Kennedy? Emerson. That's right, like the college. Emerson? Yep. Kennedy Emerson Warner. Oh, my God, that is so... At least Patty's name don't sound too white. On paper, they're like, okay, he could be something. Kennedy, you're like, Kennedy Emerson Warner? That's like, that is a white person. <laughs> Kennedy Warner is a um, designer and wardrobe specialist from California. She studied at Mount Holyoke and she, Mount Holyoke <laughs> and um, she immediately began her professional career working at the Berkeley Repertory Theater in the East Bay of the San Francisco area. She there met the love of her life where she and her partner moved okay. to New this York City. I, you do yours how you want to do yours. <laughs> where they moved to New York City to pursue a career in theater and performing arts management. She works on Broadway for Ain't Too Proud and is the vice president of operations at Bob the Drag Queen LLC. Please welcome to the podcast, Miss Kennedy Warner. Woo! All right, do you want to fact check my... um? Everything is correct, and uh, I'm a Scorpio. And she's a Scorpio, which I, I don't know a lot about... Um, 
zodiacs, but people say Scorpios are difficult and um, so check. Right, answers. <laughs> check, bitch, check. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, coming to the stage here is a music theater prodigy. All the way, he toured America and the world as a childhood music theater star. Then, swiftly at the age of 18, he came to New York City, where he had, when he began, his, Bob is over there trying something shady. Bob, you're on camera. I can see you. I'm not. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm telling Jacob I need a charger for my cell phone. Wow. Oh, paranoid. Okay. <laughs> where he began his days in music theater, acting, dancing, singing, commercials, everything. <laughs> Kennedy, why are you laughing? Because your little <laughs> announcement is crunchy. <laughs> he is 5'7", five, 5'7", seven, five, seven, a graceful 137 pounds. He's beautiful. He's redheaded. And he is the vice president and CEO of Monet Exchange LLC Operations CEO. Incorporated. Wait, Patty's the CEO? What are you? He's what the, the fuck CEO. are you doing? He found it. He found it, a girl. Found it, a CEO. Wait, wait, Patty. Okay, your stats are all. Patty's not five seven. No, what, no, Patty? No. How tall I, are you? I have, I'm five four, and I actually only weigh one hundred and twenty five pounds. But I was, thank you. I was about to say, Patty's five four, weighs one twenty five. Even I know that. I'm are you five, five four? four? I yes, I'm f- all all of five four. Oh my We're goodness! That's why. I, that's why my arms have to go above my head when I zip you up. <laughs> Girl, Patty is a buck and a quarter soaking wet with fucking covered in lube. All covered in lube. Excuse me. Picture. Which actually is a, probably the most accurate representation of me. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you and Patty been it's together? So nice now. Uh, Patty and I have been together for this. Is, is this going on three years, Patty? I can't even. I, I don't even know. I think so. I mean, when did it was? I think we started working together February, the February before season ten premiered. So then this is. So then it's. Two years then, two and a half years. Yeah, I mean, it feels much longer. It does. Well, also because in our line of work, it just we just do a lot of shit. You know what I mean? Well, like, and I think for us, I mean, it's probably not usual that you did a full regular season and then immediately turned around and did All Stars. So it was like All-Stars. we had two rushes of like a season in yeah. the two years. So it was a lot. Do you all want to talk about how Kennedy- you got connected? Um, we, oh, we, we, connect, we connected through you. Bob, so Bob and Patty were friends. And then Patty worked with Peppermint for a year. And then um, and then after that, I, I mean, I got on the show. And Patty was really good at his job. And he was really good with Peppermint. And they were... Operative word being was. <laughs> was. <laughs> and then Patty and I were just closer as friends. And then Bob was like, why don't you and Patty start working together? And then I reached out to Patty. And then the rest is history. I realize now I got Patty his last two jobs. So Patty was working at um, on Fire Island. Was like, girl, I don't want to work on Fire Island anymore. And I was like, well, Pep needs an assistant. I'll connect you two. So I connected Patty with Pep, and then their work relationship was coming to an end. And Patty was like, I need work. And Monet was like, I need an assistant. I was like, oh, I'll connect you two. So then y'all ended up working together. And then how do you? I remember yeah. things differently. How do you remember it? I, well, so yes, Peppermint for sure. But then I think what happened with uh, Monet and I is Monet and I had actually talked about it before. Do you remember the time that I rode back with you from Fire Island? Like me you, or Bob? Yeah, for, no, you. Who else? Bob doesn't drive. Bob ain't had a driver's license in years. Oh, right. True. Um, we were riding back from Fire Island, you and I. I came back with you for some reason after your gig at Cherry's. I don't know why. I had the day off. I went back into the city and I rode with you. And I remember you, this was before, like, right before, well, some of the girls had been uh, talking all over the place about the fact that they had gotten onto season 10. So we knew that the cast had been chosen. And we were riding back, and you turned and you were like, Patty, you're going to start assisting Peppermint. You were like, you were like, what am I going to do now? And oh, this did be- I say that? You said that, and this was before I had started working with Peppermint. So Ooh, Peppermint messy. got uh, head over heels on Broadway and was going to be... Uh, in New York uh, for an extended period of time. And I liked traveling. So when that 
when I found out that you were going to be on season 10 or it was more confirmed, I think I dropped a little like, you know, I was like, oh, hey, like, you know, if you need anyone, I'm here. And here we are, girl. Because we had already been friends. We'd already been friends through Bob, and I had already heard through the grapevine and whatnot. So, you know. Well, I wouldn't call us friends. Uh, how do you? Uh, how do? Uh, how do you and Kennedy? How do y'all start? Because Kennedy was not, Kennedy's your second assistant or third, Ke- second. Well, I mean, technically, Patty was my second assistant. Patty, Patty is- yeah, I guess on a technicality, <laughs> I was the second assistant. Well, Kennedy, how did we meet? We met um, at Berkeley Rep. We. Don't get too excited, Kennedy. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Ugh, Berkeley Rep. No, it was a lovely spring day. We, wh- I don't think we actually met at the meet and greet. There's like, when you when a new production comes in, everyone who's working at the company hosts a meet and greet, basically, of all the new actors that are coming into town because they just moved here. They haven't started rehearsals yet. Um, we hear a little bit from our director. And I don't think Bob and I actually met that day, but I saw Bob and everyone was like, oh my God, it's Bob. And I didn't know anything about anything. <laughs> and, but I still okay, really Okay, so, so, so Kennedy, Kennedy was not a drag race watcher. She had never seen Bob's season. She had no idea who Bob was. No, I, I had some friends who had watched it, but I didn't really watch TV growing up. I didn't have the channels that you needed to watch the show and all of that and I had just gotten out of college and didn't really watch TV in college so put all that together I had no idea who Bob was I had no idea what Drag Race was but the funny thing is so during the show uh uh they the uh the wardrobe girls um oh, yeah, I was getting to that hang on the, the hallway yeah so there's like this hallway to get to the stage from the dressing rooms and that's where they like stationed the wig cart and that's where the laundry machine is and that's like where we get to sit and when i say wardrobe girls i'm only saying that because ours happen to be all ladies yeah but i think there there's... were six of us yeah um and andrea and i did the hair right yeah and then Mo- and then and then anna did all the lesions yeah anna gave people anna's <laughs> job was to make people look like they had aids all the time she's like i just give people aids all day yeah and um, I lost your eyebrows constantly. Oh, yeah. Kennedy, like, <laughs> lost. Anyway, so the way that Kennedy got into Drag Race was Kennedy, they, were, they would get bored in the hallway because one of the shows was significantly slower than the other one. Yeah. And it was the first show. It was, like, a lot slower pace. So I just said, here's my iPad. It has my um, my login information. Just go on my Amazon. Just I, I purchased every season of the Drag first Race. thing we bonded about at all. What was it? making wigs oh that's right we made these wigs together you can actually go back through um my uh highlights on my instagram story one's called wig making and that wig that i always wear that front wig that i pull back and put all the other wigs in the back of i the fronted that i fronted that <laughs> yeah, i was about to say if you mean the only wig you wear <laughs> but i put other wigs wig. on the back of it y'all are so shady i'm literally wearing another wig this second um <laughs> So anyway, I fronted this wig, and Kennedy had made this Cruella Deville wig, which is in my apartment no, somewhere. I, I took it home. Oh, you took she took it home. So she did a whole Cruella Deville human hair, uh, black and like white platinum blonde wig, and, and I it's white. and I fronted a um. It's white yakky. White yakky, white yakky, and I fronted uh, a um a fucking wig, which I always use. Okay, here's what I want to know. So, so when you guys get bonded. When you guys get into a town, what is what is y'all routine? Because Patty and I normally have have a routine that we do too. Like, Wait, we're like, not right, done with our story yet. Get her, drag her. Okay, 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 this okay, is okay, this okay. is a forty five minute podcast. Y'all over here fucking okay, dancing. Okay, we're moving along. Story. Y'all he gonna have to make this a two part podcast. Part story. one is gonna okay. have to be Kennedy and Bob. <laughs> right. Oh my God. We like to talk. Um, <laughs> so we're making wigs together, and then one day I was like working in the hallway, and Bob oh, yeah. was like on the way to his like like places call in the middle of a play and he goes we need to talk doesn't say anything else Very i'm just loud. like sitting there like okay what like usually if an actor comes up to you and is like we need to talk there's like something wrong with like your underwear or like, <laughs> like i shit myself you did something wrong or we need to talk i shit myself <laughs> like, so i'm over here like we need to talk and then bob doesn't say anything really to me for the next two weeks like two weeks i'm like what did he need to talk I to me about? I forgot that we needed to talk. I forgot. And then he came up to me, like, two weeks later. I think we should work together. 
and then walked away, still didn't say anything else. And I'm like, work together. Very we wrong. are working together. Like, <laughs> like that's what we're doing right now. Very and wrong. then something else. Oh, and then you were doing the shows at Oasis. Yeah. And you needed help. And I helped with that. And then we had like a trial run doing the finale of The Pit Stop. What yeah. season was that? Season? I, I did it with Delta. And it was season, um, what, right before? It's Monet season, season 10. Right. Oh, yeah. But she, she wasn't there. Yeah. And then. Um, <laughs> When it was away filming All Stars that time, and then, and then we did a cruise together after Angels closed. Yep. So it was a very gentle lead in. I didn't really get to like experience what it actually was like because it was like, let's go on a Mediterranean cruise for ten days and only work one of the days, and let's fly to LA for one day and film one thing that's super like put together and you already have all the outfits. And, and then she met Vlad. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, fucking Vlad. The Vla- okay, I mean, I'm, I'm, just, I'm to gonna be. Re- I'm gonna be. Re- I'm gonna be real, real. Vlad is what is the promoter who did the Canadian mini tour that we did and he is just crazy he he is crazy he was fucking up with our food he wasn't fucking feeding us bob had to get him together and gather her like a fucking ponytail and then it was the four of us in the dressing room and bob got him together because we were hungry and he was like, you know what he actually sent me a ahead. message on whatsapp and 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 checked in and asked if i was doing okay during quarantine no, oh that is nice that is nice that was one of the times i no. yelled at people oh. and then i was like oh one of the times i went off like i one of the few times in my life i was like screaming i mean screaming at someone <laughs> vlad was one of them i mean i was scr- i think i've screamed at vlad my mom um I screamed at screamed Violet Chashki. Violet, yeah, Violet. And I think that's it. In my adult life, those three people. Thorgy? I never screamed Derek? at Thorgy. Never screamed at Derek. <laughs> yes, I was like did. sniding. I was, I was like sniding and biting. But I was, when you saw me, I was, scre- I, my eyes were bulging. I had veins <laughs> popping out of my head. I was like, I am hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, okay, really quick. So what is y'all's, what is y'all's routine when, y- when y'all get into town? This, this is Patty's and mine, okay? Will I get into yeah. town? If I like need something like, uh, like something from the store, like foundation or something that I because I forgot it or a razor pad to go look for it or something like that. Or if we need to like, uh, so oh, I got this. So we queens wear nails all the time. We glue them on, and when you keep on using them, we get glue stuck on the back of them, and they don't they don't stick as well. So I got a Dremel, and sometimes Patty Dremels the glue off of my nails, and he is I think it's his least favorite thing to do. Yeah, I see those clips yeah, of Patty maybe, wearing, wearing a maybe. Corona mask. I have to think about it. But, That's why I have a mask in the first place. I was already ready for Corona from uh, dribbling Monet's nails. <laughs> and then, but Patty we and I will like, will we, we just, we just, we just kind of like do our own thing until it's time to go to the club, right? We, yeah, I mean, we basically get to the hotel and we're like, later. Yeah, and we don't. Really well, I can tell you what I do, and King tell you what she does. Usually, when we get to a town, um, I will will go to like a theater or the, the the university. I don't do a lot of clubs anymore, to be honest. I don't think you've ever done a club with me, have you? I have. You know, you've done a few clubs, yeah. So I get to the town. I'll do. I'll go to the sound check, and then um, while I'm while nope. I'm doing the sound check, um, <laughs> Kennedy's off doing whatever she's doing, and then I finish sound check and I go back, and then all my stuff is laid out. I start doing my makeup. Magically laid out because we yeah. don't know what Kennedy's. I'm doing. letting you do your part. I'm letting you tell yours. To, I'm telling just my process. I don't know if you do something else in the meeting. I'm just telling just my process. I go back, all my makeup was laid out, and then I start doing my makeup, and then Kennedy's doing whatever she's doing, um, and then we get dressed and go to the stage. So what, what's your, now you can tell your part of the story. So when we land, usually a local picks us up and drives us to somewhere to eat. Yeah. And then we'll go to the venue, we'll set stuff up. Sometimes... Sometimes we just go straight to the hotel. It depends yeah. on when we get into the town. True, true, true. If we're true. getting in at, in the morning and the sound check is until the afternoon, then we'll sleep. I don't think Monet has left. ever done a sound check. I think I, I can I count on one hand how many times you've done a sound check. Never. Well, well I'll say, Bob, also, you don't. Bob, usually, Bob is not singing live. So why? What do you? What the fuck are you sound no, but checking? We have dancers. We usually like hire local people as dancers, so we have like a little rehearsal with them. And not to mention that you know me when I me and technology are so fucked. I go in to do sound check to make sure things running smoothly, and then somehow 
inevitably it always gets fucked up. I'll oh, be like, all right, issue. I want to make sure the sound sounds right. I get to the college, they play it, the sound cuts out in the middle of my song. They never, they always say, give it up for Bob, and the music doesn't start playing. But during the soundtrack, it ran smoothly. And then the day of the show, my shit, that's why when we did Simple Robbery together in the UK, and the, the chord kept disconnecting in the middle of my part of our number, every time <laughs> I would go to open my mouth, Monet's part was smooth selling. I would open my mouth to lip sync and all of a sudden the whole thing would just shut the fuck down. And I was like, what is it with me and technology? Do you guys ever argue, Monet? Do you and Patty ever argue? We Patty, like do you occasion- want to that? I mean, we occasionally like disagree, but I don't know that we've ever like full on seriously argued. We bicker, but I think most of it has been like, you know, in jest. I don't know. Have we? Have we ever like full on mm, argued? No, I think we've ever argued. I feel like Monet avoids no. conflict with white people. <laughs> Drag her. <laughs> um, no, we don't ever argue. You're usually pretty direct. If I've like fucked up yeah. or something, you're usually pretty direct. That I'm like noted. Yeah, and then also, and then also, I just, I'm just I, honestly, Patty can speak to this too. He, he say yes or no. I'm a really easygoing person. Bob is not very easygoing. Monet is easy going. very easygoing. Yeah. What do you mean I'm not easygoing? Kennedy, thank you. I've I've <laughs> I've I've, uh, I've worked for three queens now, and uh, I would say that probably Monet is very very easygoing. Monet I'm, is wait, very easy not easygoing. Patty, what of your experience with me was not easygoing? <laughs> Well, you know what? Actually, my experience with you was like at us directly was very easygoing, but that's also because I was filling in, so so there wasn't quite as much pressure. What about the sibling rivalry? So we worked, we did that together. We did do that together. <laughs> Wait, what was it easygoing? Someone say something on this goddamn phone call. You're very particular. But you once are very particular knows about how things what your are done. Things you're... Are, yeah, then you're easygoing. <laughs> Y'all are so oh, you're very easy oh. going after your particulars have been met. Right. Yeah. Also, and can we talk about Sim Rivalry Tour in the UK? We uh, Bob does this whole stink <laughs> about us and luggage and get to the thing. We get to the venue and talk about, oh, you and Patty doing this, doing this and that and the other. I came, I was, I got, I had all my shit. We are unpacking everything and Bob fault. has forgotten, Bob has forgotten costumes. Bob has forgotten his entire boy wardrobe. He Bob can't has remember nothing he that he needs for this tour. in the first place. <laughs> Okay, I want to talk about one thing. Me and Monet each left one costume piece at home. We both, I left no, my Bob, you cat left suit two. and you left your onesie. We both left one costume piece at home. That Only is difference true. is yeah, yeah. yours was able to be purchased at a store and mine was a custom garment. That is literally the only difference. But didn't you, you also all... forget like tights and stuff? Weren't we like running yes, around you forgot looking your for tights, tights? And you forgot titties. I had to give you titties and tights. Well, also your entire suitcase. Well, I left my, I left, I did leave my, I did leave my, um, my, my suitcase full of day clothes. But as far as costumes go, Kennedy, I forgot to pack one of the costume pieces. I did, I'm sorry. See, and, that's and it was the thing when you're an assistant. It is never going to be your fault. It will always be our fault. Well, that's not true because me and Kennedy have different things. So when we do costumes, Kennedy does costumes. I do the makeup and other stuff. We have our thing. We have our, we have our system. But the, the uh, one yeah. issue with yeah. that system was that I hung all of the sibling rivalry stuff together. And then I think you moved the cat suit because you wore it for something else. And you didn't put it back. No, so Kennedy rivalry. puts things in the closet based on the gig, and I put things in the closet based on the color. So if I look for a silver costume, I put I took the silver costume and I put it in the silver costume section. Only if it's for sibling rivalry. Well, That's what I'm then, th- saying. so I, I moved things yeah, around based Kennedy on the color. Yeah, but Kennedy is saying that she separated your costume specifically to go into the suitcase all in one place. And now you're saying yeah, it's a my color costumes. order issue? <laughs> they're my costumes, bitch. Yeah, I don't get it. Y'all I'm got your some, assistant. <laughs> Y'all got some crunchy ass system over there. I just, I, I, we, well, Patty, Patty doesn't really pack my stuff or my makeup to go because I just like to do it knowing that, because I know that I Patty do doing? it. It depends, it depends on what it is. Like when you do your yes, home and show, I, I pack that. When right. like, we but don't do like, sound checks. Patty doesn't pack anything. What is he, a fucking familiar? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I'm. I. I. I serve a lot as the go-between. When she but, forgets well, someone's name. And I think this is maybe name. kind of like a, a lot of people have this question too. Like they're like, "What do you do?" I'm like, I, it really depends on the situation. Like I do right. a lot of different things. There's not like one thing I do, but probably more often than not, I'm. I'm mostly the go-between 
for the contact at whatever event we're doing. And, and merch. Monet. Yeah. And, and I Bob doesn't do believe in yet. merch. I'm, I'm so blown away right now that y'all all think I'm so particular. I'm so easy to get along with. Bob, well, you, are, think... you you don't even believe that because I know I know you being fun. you just know you believe that in yourself. I I honestly think I'm easy to get along with. I'm easy. <laughs> Why is everyone being so quiet? Because I want to get paid. I do pay you every fucking time. I am an easy person to get along with. <laughs> People on the set of We're always like, you are so easy to get along with. Yeah, because we should have like Kennedy and I should have. We should have been working with you. We should have figured out a series of questions to be like, if like X isn't available, you would like what done? Like for example, uh, Kennedy moved some uh, checks in my apartment. Mm -hmm. But I think what we have that goes for us, we are very. We, we communicate really quickly, really effectively. We problem solve very fast. So I was looking for some checks that I needed to deposit. Um, I couldn't find them. I looked over. They were there. And I was like, oh, the checks are here. So Kenny Shepard said, hey, Kenny, just make sure you don't move the checks. And then he was like, cool. That is effective and easy. That's not particular. It's just don't move the stuff in the basket. That seems really easy. Okay, but you see, but the way, but probably I would, I would, I would guarantee the way that you said that was a roundabout way. And then instead of just saying, Kennedy, don't move the checks, you probably be like, I don't know. I can't, I, I can't even put it into the box. What I said words, was, but- I said, Kennedy, can you please not move the checks? That is not roundabout. That is, if I am anything, I am as direct as a person can possibly be. I, if anything, I, I, Sometimes. I am so not interested in avoiding conflict. I walk right that up is to true. it. I, like, I, will, I, will, I will say that, but you would say in a way like you like to like teach her a lesson. Like, I, 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 Kennedy, do you, do you know, do you know what I'm trying to say? Okay, with this particular example, it like. The thing is, is I like to separate the mail because there's some like important things that often just sit in the basket and then I will go in every once in a while and make sure that there's nothing that's like, I don't know, crazy in there. And then I'll move some of the other stuff so that the basket doesn't fill up. So that's what I was doing. I was in the process of that, but I had just left them on the chair instead of putting them in the basket. Like for example, a long time ago, Alfredo, another I was. Basket. There's I was, another basket. So Patty knows this. I have a really weird thing about people inviting people to my house without telling me they're coming. Yeah, I was one of those people. It was really because you needed an elf that we even became friends. So <laughs> I was in the basement of my apartment. Now Fredo and his partner came over and they bought a friend. But I was in my basement with no pants on. I heard a Which voice. What's I had, yeah, pre corona. This is way pre corona. I heard a voice I had never heard in my life. In my apartment, and I was like, well, who is that? And they're like, so, so and I was like, oh, I don't want that person in my house. And then I text Joel, and I said, Joel, for future reference, do not bring anyone to my house without telling me. I didn't say, what do you think I feel about, I didn't do anything roundabout. I'm, I'm, I think I'm really direct. You're roundabout when you're trying to, like, manipulate a situation. Like what? I'm interested in an example. Like, if you call <laughs> Caitlin and talk to Caitlin about me locking her outside, I said, I'm not letting you in. Because I don't want to keep unlocking the door for you. That is so direct. Wait, you okay, locked Caitlin Bob. out? It's yeah, I locked Caitlin somebody. out one time because she kept so asking me. So she would learn how to use the lock. It was because I didn't want to keep opening the Like, I would come outside. There was a girl outside at 5 in the morning, shivering in the cold. Three times. The third time I said, I'm not going to keep opening the door for you. You need to learn how to open the fucking door. Have y'all have y'all ever been on gigs with us and you guys see other assistants and you're like, ooh, that person's a waste of space. There's really only been like one assistant that I've ever been like, say what? their name. Why are you here? Say their name. There's only one. Well, actually, there's maybe like two. Well, you know, I always say this. The, I never really know what yes. people do because there are a lot of times when people are like, Patty, what do you do? You don't do anything. I actually do a lot not when you're not looking at me which i think some assistants are like that as well it just depends on what their skill set is and what they do there's only ever been one assistant that i'm like i don't actually know what you do and what your purpose is i think this assistant is really more of an emotional support animal yeah to anyone Mm. listening wondering what the noise is we all live in washington heights it is now seven o'clock and we live very close to a hospital and New York goes crazy every day to support the uh, essential workers. So shout out to the nurses and uh, cab drivers and grocery store clerks and uh, chefs and all that stuff. Uh, what is the craziest thing that you, you've had to do um, for us, assistants? 
Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to name. I feel like I could have told you in the moment. I could have been like, I've never well, done this before. I know my craziest thing uh, Louise had to do. You dodged a very big bullet. When I pissed myself in my gown, Louise had to drop the gown off at the cleaners and tell a story about how his dog pissed on it. And the guy looked at him and goes, right. The dog pissed <laughs> right where... A, 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 right where P would come out. All right, I believe that. Um, all right, let's just take a little. Let's take a little break, and we'll talk about. Uh, we'll give you a second to think about the crazy things you've done. Listen, throw some bedding on a bunch of different mattresses, and sure, they all look alike. But the same goes for pillows. But I've gotten some really pretty beds that are quite so uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You can put whatever you want on a bed, but if the mattress below isn't comfortable, you're not getting any sleep, girl. You tired, you groggy, it's annoying. Not all mattresses are created equal, and the Purple Pillow and mattress are truly one of a kind. Now, the Purple Grid sets the Purple Mattress apart from every other mattress. It is a patented comfort technology that instantly adapts to your body's natural shape. I'm called the Kardashian of the Heights. And it also works toward your sleep style. Its open air channels and temperature neutral composition eliminates pressure it keeps you cool all at once. And girl, this cutting edge technology does not stop with just the mattress. Every perfect pillow is engineered with the grid for total head and neck support and absolute airflow. So you're always on the cool side of the pillow. That was my favorite line from the Broad family. Are, are we be cool? Mm-hmm, just like the cool side of the pillow. Wait, that's how we say cool as the other side of the pillow. Oh, yeah, there we go. Or cool as a cucumber. Um, their free shipping takes all the hassle out of shopping. Every purple is delivered right to your door, and if you're not completely satisfied, you can return it for a full refund. You listening, Ooh, Karens? Oh, yes, a full refund, Mama. Let me tell you, you won't want to. I can't describe how much I love, 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 love the purple mattress. It keeps me cool and comfortable on these hot New York City nights. Cause it's been real hot here, girl. Have you have you been feeling that heat? Yes, when I live in the same town you do. I, I, have, I have felt the heat. This may shock you, but I feel all the things you feel. Purple also has financing available as low as 0% APR for qualified customers. Um, monthly payments are easy on your COVID budget, and there's no hidden fees. Listen, y'all, experience the Purple Grid and you'll sleep like never before. Go to purple.com slash rivalry10 and use promo code rivalry10. For a limited time, you'll get 10% off any orders of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash rivalry10, promo code rivalry10 for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Terms apply. Kennedy is also, um, Kennedy, I think that you, everyone should have an assistant who's a little bit mean. Um, and Kennedy's mean. Kennedy is like mean to people. Kennedy is and very mean. Kennedy can Kennedy be very mean. mean. You know, but to be lady. fair, I'm generally very nice until I'm not. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like I, wait, we cannot blow past Patty's just a really nice. I don't I don't know that I would describe you as really nice. I generally get along with most people. Monet, have most people not been like, we love Patty? Oh yeah, definitely. I think that's Thank true. Yeah, I, I get along with people too. But do you do you think I'm really nice? Well, do you think you're really particular? <laughs> I, I don't think do I'm think that particular. Delusional? Like I, don't think I I'm don't that understand. Particular. I I don't. I think that I'm relatively nice. I think, you think Patty you're not is. Particular. I, don't think I think Patty, we should leave this I where it I'm is. I think I'm direct, and people think that's mean because I don't like small talk. Same. I and hate like, that shit. I love becoming friends with like, everyone. Nice is like small talk and caring about what other people care about when I'm just like, we're both here to like work. So let's just do that. And then like, if that goes really well, then maybe we can take this relationship on to a friendship. Yeah. Which also, Kennedy Kennedy's also very protective. And if people are like doing me wrong, they better move out of the way because fucking... Uh, Karen with pink hair is gonna come. A liberal Karen is gonna give you a fucking tongue lashing. Um, one of my favorite Kennedy stories is mm -hmm. we were at Sony Hall, and you had a dressing room. Bob had a dressing room with Britta filter, and it was only supposed to be for them. And all the other drag queens who were performing shared a dressing room. And another drag queen came into the dressing room. And was like, "Oh my God, Bob and Britta have their own dressing room. This is so nice." And Kennedy said, "Yes." It's only for them. <laughs> <laughs> and the other drag queen, she tried to laugh it off. She's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. and Kennedy just stared at her until she left. <laughs> Love yeah, that. Kennedy's like, read the sign. Read the room. And the room. <laughs> and who's in it. Have you ever had to, like, fight for Monet, Patty? Yes. 
I mean, yes, I don't know. I can't think of like one specific time. I mean, Kennedy hasn't done, I don't think you've done as many club gigs as I've done with like Mo, but I feel like 95% of those gigs end in the evening being like, where is the money? We need to leave. Are we done yet? What is happening? When can we go? Are we performing? When are we performing? Like, it's a lot of stuff like that. It's a lot of like a lot sort of, of staying on task. Out yeah. Sarah, we well, call the cars. But it's also like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if anybody's seen the uh, uh, Trixie's documentary. Um, yeah, I feel like that's the only time that, like, you know, I have to, like, fight for her is when a lot of the times uh, promoters will sort of, like, take advantage. And, and I don't think they think they're taking advantage, but they, they love to be very, like, I don't know. We're just, like, going with the flow. Like, it should happen, like, sometime like soon. No. And it's like, no, Ooh, you don't no. understand. Like, this yes. person is in a full costume. They're in makeup. They're uncomfortable. This needs to happen when you said it was going to happen. Is mm -hmm. this happening or not? Because we are leaving. We have a contract. This is the time it says Down. we get to leave, and we're going to. So you let yeah, us know Patty what is, needs to happen. Patty is Patty's really good about that, being on the promoters, and when they're not filling up to their part of the, of the deal, Patty's like, well, we're going to leave at this time, and that's what it is. And then they, and so they'll fix their shit, because they don't want to obviously lose me. And so Patty's really good about talking with them and getting shit done. I've yeah. written I've I've written plenty of, uh, per my last email. White email letter. Uh, oh, mm. absolutely. When we were dealing with uh, uh, freaking Neverland, that was, oh, a, that was a per my last email conversation Ooh, every single day. I mean, you just... Neverland. It. Well, also, I will, say, I will say having, I feel like, and I could imagine having a, a, a white woman assistant, but having a white person oh. assistant, I feel it gives good access. Girl, when I have a, having a white woman assistant, I am invincible. Between a big black man and a small white woman, <laughs> there is nothing right. stopping us. We are powerful. We walk through, uh, we, let me tell you right now, I will be at the counter asking for something for 20 minutes. Kennedy will go up there with her little glasses, <laughs> push them on her nose, and come back with three coupons, five vouchers, a meal receipt, a full refund. Um, she's yeah, now no. the general manager of the store. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, you better go, bitch. Go, white bitch, go! I'm still uh... blown I'm, I, I know, it's, I, know it, I don't want to be redundant, but I'm still blown away at... The idea that I'm not easy to work with. This is shocking. Well, this is not, revelational. It's not that you're not easy to work with. I mean, you are easy to work with. You're very professional. But also, like, for example, if, like, Mo forgets something and I go searching for it, I generally will go out of my way to try to find something. If that means, like, going to three stores, like, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes it's just, like, this it cannot be found. And I feel like sometimes also if there's like something that we don't have, Mo is like, work, we don't have it. That's just, okay, it's not here. I feel like you're like, we need this. You have to go find it. Please get this for me. Yes. Also, usually you forget something that's like vital. Not this usually. Is this is true. I don't always forget stuff. Let's just no, point out no, 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 the record no. that I do not like, always forget stuff. I think the beginning stuff. of our working relationship was a lot of... Figuring us, out who's packing what and then things no, getting falling through the cracks. getting to a gig, because I'm not really 100% sure of like what is needed. Mm -hmm. And you're not always... like Like, you don't have a list that you come like... I keep it in my noggin. Yeah. The list is up How's here. How's that working out? <laughs> I do that too, though. I keep my list. I'll write it out sometimes, but I will, but I will like, I, I normally, I, I generally like, a note, like, my, like on my phone with a list of like, everything. My packing list and all my lists are always in my head and I just go through when I'm packing. Yeah. Like I am particular about stuff, but like I think something makes sense. Like for example, when we were filming uh, an episode of uh, Sibling Rivalry, Anything You Can Do, um, Todrick just came to my house, showed up. And then Todrick was on my couch with his like shoes on my couch. Now, is it particular to be like, hey, I, I was like, I saw it and I was like, wait, 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 pause for a second. I was like, Todrick, are you crazy? Are you, get your feet off my couch. And then he took his feet off my couch and then we continued filming. So is that well, particular? That's just, a, yeah. that's, just a, that's just a human thing though. Like, and like no one has shoes on it. Like that's just a, Everyone. I don't think anyone. Would that's ha different. Let, let, that's not like a work thing. That's just like yeah, that's a, a particular thing. That's just life. 
yeah, I want to wear that wig with that thing, or or you know, I I I think I'm well. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, you a bitch. Your pussy stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I want to ask Kennedy this because this is um um I think uh funny. So, do you ever like find moments where you're like, okay, I've like done everything, I'm like good, I have a moment, and then you get like the text? You mean like at home or like at a gig? Well, like kind of both. I always feel like there, I feel like I can never let my guard down because like the moment that I'm like, okay, we're good, there's nothing to do, there's like the text that's like, I forgot all of my foundation. Right. Yeah, and you're like, oh, oh yeah. God! Was, I was like, I mean, literally, literally, like, literally today. Today, literally today, I walk in. I'm like, oh, we have so much time. We're doing great. I found parking outside. I walk in. Not five minutes later, we realize that the show that we're supposed to be filming in two hours has started already. Work. And we are still like nothing set up. We don't have like half face done. Uh, it was insane. It. And, and See, then I don't I have know. Like, Mo and I have okay. never. I don't think we've ever done something like that. Have we, we don't do something. Okay, like well, that. okay, that has never happened to us before. Let me right now. Never. Me and Kennedy but are like usually that. the first ones ready every time. Like there's a group of people. We're always there, being like, "Hey, everyone!" And, and I'm not one of the smug folks who's like, "Unless it's Monet, because I'm being extra." I'm never like, "See, I mean, I'm like, hey, everyone, let's just do this." But today, we just thought that this thing was happening at four. It was happening at two, and it was one fifty-seven. And I was like, <laughs> "All right, bitch. have you guys ever missed things. a flight collectively? Did we? You have. When? <laughs> <laughs> I was there. When? Um, the flight to South Carolina. Oh, I didn't, okay, I didn't, I did not miss this flight. Do you have, like, a contingency plan? When? I feel like this is the thing that up. people want to, oh, like, Wait, 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 what are you talking know. about? What was this flight? This was the flight to Clemson. I remember this. didn't wake up. I was sitting at the airport. This was, like, one of the first things after I moved here, too. So I was like, oh, I'll just meet you at the airport. I'm sitting at the gate. I've called you maybe 700 times. You also always have your phone on silent, which makes no sense to me. I don't like to hear it. I mean, yes. But in in an emergency, like it's three in the morning. I'm sitting at like this gate. Don't phone noises irritate you? Yes, 100%. But they also wake you up. I have an alarm. When? where was it? <laughs> I forgot to set it, apparently. So I'm sitting there. I'm about to, like, it's, like, final call. I'm sitting at the gate because I'm, like, I don't know if I can get on this flight. I don't know what to do. Nobody, like, we never talked about this before because we never, like, come across a situation. Right as I'm walking onto the plane, you call me back and you go, I'm going to figure it out. Get on the plane. I'm going to figure it out. So I'm, like, in our first class seats alone, like... <laughs> Guess I'm going to do a show in Clemson, <laughs> South Carolina tonight. Well, so do I you arrive. Guys, so the now you guys have like a contingency like, plan, right? Oh, yeah. Like I go and Bob figures it out. But I get there and the lady's looking at me like, <laughs> excuse me, are you Bob the drug queen? <laughs> and I'm just like, no, um, he'll be arriving later, <laughs> right before the show. <laughs> It worked out. It worked out because... Things always work out for me. Which is kind of true, and it's really annoying. <laughs> you know, one time, I think the only... We've missed a flight together before. What what flight Canada. we missed together? Remember oh, to, the flight to Canada? To Canada, right. We missed that flight together. Yes. And then I somehow only... I've only missed flights by myself. When I had mm-hmm. to like go Patty has missed like somewhere. three flights when he missed. That is not true. I've missed like two. It is two. three. I it's missed not three. three. To be fair, three is like two. <laughs> <laughs> three is like two. But the oh, I think one of the my favorite story of missing flights is when we were in Australia and New Zealand. We were flying back <laughs> from New Zealand. Oh my god! We had just <laughs> gone. We had like really felt our oats in New Zealand, and we went shopping. And so there's this like thing in New Zealand where you can like have your stuff dropped off at the duty free in the airport, and you like pick up the stuff in the airport. So we like went and picked up our stuff. So we had extra bags that we weren't used to carrying when we were like flying. So we had a connecting flight from New Zealand. Oh. And to in Sydney yes. to from Sydney to New York. Well, we get on the like train thing to get to the Sydney airport to get to our connecting flight back to the United States from Australia. And Monet turns and looks at me and she's like, 
I forgot my bag. And I was like, bitch, I left a Gucci bag on. on now my, who's on, forgetting on, shit? On, on my on my overhead with like with like fourteen hundred dollars worth of stuff in it. So Monet was like, I have to go back. So she goes back. She's like, you just go ahead because it's like, what do you do in that scenario? Especially flying from Australia to the United States. It's like, do we miss this together? Does one of us go? (laughs) So anyway, what happens is I go get on the plane. I get a text message from Monet that is like, I am missing the flight. I am missing the flight. I will not make it. You go ahead. For 24 hours... (laughs) I thought Fly. I was on the plane by myself. Cut to we get to baggage claim and she is standing there with a smug like, ass hey, girl. grin. <laughs> Meanwhile, okay, I'm but... trying to figure out what we're supposed to do. I just see her suitcases going around the carousel. I can't get them because I came into the country with only two suitcases. So I can't take more suitcases than I had because they don't have my name on them. So I'm like trying to figure out what the hell is going on. She's like texting me being like, just grab them. And I'm like, oh, she must be on the next flight. Money and meanwhile, so weird. her ass that was is so weird. There. But that's the thing. So, so Patty comes down to escalator. This, this is the international at, um, at LAX. So Patty's coming down to escalator and I, I'm like hiding behind a pole because because I see him, so I'm like trying to How like hide. How big was pole? Did you hide? <laughs> <laughs> I think you mean a pillar. <laughs> a pillar, a pillar. So I'm standing behind this machine. pillar, and I'm just like, I'm just like trying to hide I'm from Patty so he doesn't see out. me. So Patty's like moving. So I'm like rotating around the pillar so to like hide from Patty. And then, um, and then finally, I was like, I see my back. I was like, okay, I have to, I have to like stop this shit now. I'm like, hey, girl, here I am. But he's like, what? It was a really funny moment. Literally, I mean, if, the if I was running late, I would take like Kennedy. In eighteen hours, and I spent the entire time thinking I was on that flight alone. If I would have been running, like I would have test Kennedy, fake a seizure, <laughs> get to the doorway, fall over, break a leg. No, but remember the time that I had to leave you behind? Oh, on Gay Pride. It was our first Pride together. We're rushing back, and uh, Delta had fucked up some shit, so all of, every fight was pushed back, and they, I don't know what they were basing it off of, they were giving seats away. No, we were, so like, if you're in the air and you're gonna mix, miss your connection, they automatically rebook you. But for some reason, they rebooked you and not me. It wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't off of uh, miles, so status, nothing. alphabetical order, because all of those, I would come first, <laughs> but for some reason, Kennedy just got a seat and I did not get a seat. I'm a white woman. They must have knew. And, and I Kennedy told you that name. They, they, was like, they was like Kennedy Emerson. Yep. We're going to make sure she's all My right. My name is Christopher <laughs> Delmar Caldwell. Who sounds whiter than me? Besides Kevin Burton. So I was, I was, I was, so I, Kennedy was like stressing out. Like, I can't get on this flight. I was like, I Kennedy. Couldn't, I couldn't. I, was like, I, I have my iPad. I'll just go to like, the Sky Lounge and just watch it TV. It brings me back to this protective. Like, Bob is going to be alone in an airport for the next six hours. Like, I cannot let this happen. But it's just an airport. It's like, I'm not in the Serengeti. Okay, okay, running wait, from can lions. we circle this back around? Kennedy has a fear of you being left alone in an airport for an extended period of time, and you think that you're not particular or difficult. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm intrigued You're that sitting here like, Ken- it's just the airport, and Kennedy's like, oh, God, he's going to be alone. Because you But were I'm allowed- not difficult. I'm like, I'm like, it's just the airport. That's not difficult. I'm like, oh, whatever, no, just get on the flight. That shows how easygoing I am. I also want to point out that Kennedy has a f- fear of me being alone, and Monet's like, ha ha, Patty thinks he's alone. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. That's fair. <laughs> do you, how do you feel about me being alone? What do you mean about you being alone? Like, would you do that to me? If you. Well, I mean, would you pretend if you, you Bob would asleep? fully leave you? No, I would not. Leave. I would not pretend. No, I would tell you right away. I believe in open and honest communication. <laughs> I don't like. I don't. I would not like. I don't but believe you in. Like, you like jokes. You like pranking people. If you. But n- I don't like. But not like sneaking up on people. Oh, I hate that. Or. Oh my god. I don't sneak up. I don't. I don't Monet like. I would not. Monet used to tickle me so much. Monet used to tickle me so much that at this point, if she advances too quickly, I retreat. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I, true. Oh, that's true i stay so, i stay scaring I, I love scaring patty it's like my favorite thing uh, oh i anytime oh i God, walk into the, the apartment if i have me? my earphones in oh yeah she'll come I, around I, I, the I started crying at the I, would, I would scare kennedy and then she would cry and bob was like mona you cannot scare kennedy she doesn't like that i was like oops sorry <laughs> that is so yeah I, I i would i would not do that to ken but also i think that kennedy being nervous would leave me isn't about me not out of fear of repercussion for what i would do that's based on kennedy's own stuff i've never like i don't bully kennedy i don't i don't yell at kennedy i 
I'm really. This is true. I can confirm all of that. <laughs> but that was Kennedy's. Like, oh my god, this is that's her. Like, must protect uh, instincts. All right, last question for but me. But then anyway. I saw you later that day and cried and started bawling. <laughs> Also, you had a couple of sangrias. Uh, um, I had one, but I also went to the gig without you. Yeah, it was pride, and, and it was pride, and Sherry Pie was there. Um, oh so my you're god! True. Um, is there an outfit that Monet packs, and you're like, not this outfit? Oh, I don't want to do. Absolutely. Yes. What's the one? There are multiple. Oh well, yeah, the that's true. Flannel. Well, no, honestly, there's not. There's only one that I've ever actively been like, I'm going to destroy this, and that is your little uh, uh, caftan, what? that blue caftan that I have oh made that you refuse to get rid of, and I'm like, it is because... red baron. This has to go. I'm it, was nice, it was it's a so nice. Cute. It was a nice caftan. It was, it was one, eh? a very nice caftan. It is no longer a very nice caftan, and. There is an expiration date to outfits, and sometimes queens will not acknowledge that. They mean so much but I don't to us. Think, but I don't think there's Freeman, anything else that I'm like, own. oh, God, not this again. I, probably ones that are difficult for me to put together. The so white one. The white, the white the white, angelic white one is a lot. The angelic white one is a pain in the ass. The, so I used the to have this, uh, you know, that used anything to white. be really difficult. Any, well, any time, those boots, anytime you, we had the fucking, um, motocross BMX one. Boots. Yeah. That yes. one was a fucking nightmare. There's so you know, I currently have one. three of those, um, uh, blue shoes suits. for your Phoenix costume. I oh, hate yes. those shoes. Those are hard. My fingers so are like, literally raw and near you get, bleeding. You like, calluses and then they just, like, <laughs> I have zipper calluses. A hundred percent. You know, I have three of those little Mugler inspired cat suits from Domino. Yes. The what? They're like these Mugler inspired cat suits. And so I have oh, my yeah, brown yeah, yeah. one. So my first one, black Domino built this, a corset, like a, like a, a Girl, bodice into I it. Wore it. You, uh-huh. you hook each thing individually. Also, I was, I was like growing at the time. I was growing as a person. Um, so when Louise <laughs> put it, when Louise put it on me, he, his fingers would just start like hurting so much from trying to hook me into each individual thing and then like trying to zip me into it. So when I would bring that out, he, he would just literally be like start sweating and be like, I also That's Louise, how I feel about the rainbow dress. The, oh, the rain, that, the new rainbow dress. Yeah. is so hard. It, it does not fit. And now yet, it will. And yet, <laughs> we've worn it so many times. And it's zipped up every time. So I You're guess welcome. it does fit mom. <laughs> With it, a lot of effort and multiple yeah, people. Yeah, I don't. What's like a? What's like a? Uh, I don't know. What's like a thing? An inside like thing or like joke that you like you and Kennedy do? I mean, they're they're usually at the at the expense of another queen, and they wouldn't be. Uh... Or I like to talk to you while you're <laughs> say to their you. names. Oh well, there is that. So we have two. There's one where we, when we do cruises, we always take the stairs. Always take the stairs. Um, so we just kind of say it a lot now. We'll get the stairs and I'll just look at Ken and go, oh, Kennedy, we always take the stairs. Or for a while, I kept doing this thing where I kept going, I, <laughs> I have to have my coffee <laughs> every, every morning. And I wouldn't be drinking coffee. I would I'm just go, just not myself. I'm just not myself until I've had my coffee. And it makes no sense because we both don't drink coffee. But it just really tickled me. I think what tickled me was Kennedy's response to me telling me, saying I need coffee and doing this. I just have to have my coffee. Bitch, that's Patty. Patty cannot, Patty will have 18 coffees a day. This is true. 80, 18 coffees. Coffee cups everywhere. Coffee. Oh, I, I leave coffee cups everywhere. You know, I do a thing. I like to leave stuff all over the place. I think that psychologically, it's so that people won't forget that I'm there or forget me. Is that something we need to unpack right now? <laughs> no, not right now. That's maybe for another episode. Is, is this an episode our, of what you're packing, but is it a costume, just emotional say, baggage? What would you say our, like, what's our, like, what are our things? We have a couple, I, I think. We do have a couple, but I, I, you know me, girl. I can't remember anything until it's happening. One of our moment. favorite, one of our favorites, is when whenever we are doing something and we are running out of time and we don't have time to fix it, is edit and post. Oh yeah, edit and post, girl. I, I, I don't have, I don't have, the, I don't have the airings. Go. I don't have the race. It is, it is a fully a live performance, and we can't. But I'm like, bitch, edit and post, because I'm not, I'm not putting on these nails. That's a good drag, editing post. That's a good drag name, Miss Editing Post. Um, I think our, I, I think probably our other one is every most of the time when I put you into a corset, I say photos are forever. 
<laughs> I know. Because sometimes I really try to get around putting a corset on pads. Like, no, it has to go on. I, I fucking... whenever, whenever it's time to really make it happen, I was Kenny goes, how tight do you want? And I always say, hurt me. Um, <laughs> sometimes you... they say, you know, the money's gone, Rose. <laughs> do, you, do is there is there something that Patty does or vice versa that drives you crazy? I, I'm gonna tell you mine to give you an example. Oh, there's two the, things. The, I Kennedy love, does I love that, how Bob's like. Uh, Bob's like. Is there anything okay, that and, anything that annoys you? I'm gonna. Well, start. I'm just gonna give I'm you an start. example so you can think of one, and I'll say mine. So I'll, I'll give you just Kennedy an does, example of one, and then I'll tell you my real one. <laughs> Kennedy doesn't that drives me crazy. Kennedy um, will try to hand me things while I'm doing things. So I'll be like pulling my hair up and then Kennedy will hand me, like point something at me and she'll hold it out to hand it to me. And and then like, if I don't grab it soon enough, she'll like pulse her no, arm I at don't. me. Okay, I okay maybe not there. the pulsing. You're getting crazy. But she's holding it in my face. I'm like, Kennedy, I'm like, my hands are busy. Or the other thing is, if I'm on speakerphone, Kennedy does this thing where she sits as far in the room as you can possibly sit from the phone and then face the corner and then whisper into her hands and then think the person on the phone can hear what she's saying. Well, Bob, I think that's a you thing because you, is, and our listeners of the, of the podcast know this, you have done this to Jacob 19 times. Like, Jacob, can you talk into the microphone? And Jacob is like, I'm over here working. What do you mean? So well, but, he that might be a Bob but then he thing. tries to contribute something, but then he's like... We get it. You're annoyed by it. It drives <laughs> me crazy. The thing is, is in my professional training, which uh, was... Uh, costume design in fittings if you're assisting in a designer and they ask for something you just get it ready for them and then you're ready and you're there and they it, like it's kind of like an unspoken agreement that they're all gonna finish whatever they're gonna do but they know that you're there with like a safety pin or a measuring tape or like something so oftentimes when i'm handing you something it's like kennedy uh grab my tights and i'll grab the tights and you you're doing something else and i'll hand you the tights or stick my face <laughs> stick them in your face just to let you know that i got them but unspoken agreement is one thing but i think we've spoken about this one <laughs> patty's thing is that i will times. be i will be explaining something to patty and then patty goes wait what <laughs> i'm like bitch you do that that's patty. true you that's do. true i do do that i'm not even oh gonna patty loves a wait what I will, it's, I, will, my, I will fully it's my stall yeah. it's while i think of what i need to say or whatever it's my stall i should get rid of it but it's a comfort blanket uh-huh all right so kennedy go what's the thing you're like oh this drives me crazy um watching things with you is really hard um trying to help you <laughs> sometimes is really hard wait how, what do you mean uh, watching things what makes watching things with me hard so you'll be like Kennedy, what what high school did you go to? And you start the video, and then you you don't like the beginning of the video or something's happening, so you like to fast forward into it. And if you're not getting what you want to see from the video, you'll start talking over it and be like, well, in this other video that I saw, and then you're just talking about another video as we're all trying to watch the video that you put on, but you've also like started rewinding it at certain points of time, so it's really hard to like know what's going on. I can on. agree to well, all of that, to about except video. the talking. I always pause yeah, before I, I talk. No, Bob will, if Bob has a thought, Joe, or even a cough or anything that is going to have to make noise on his behalf, he will pause the video so fast. <laughs> in the middle of the the, I mean, it is the arc something. of the it is the arc of the YouTube video, and pa and Bob will pause it and be like, you know what I think, and we're like, ah, ah. But also, it, whatever you usually like interject with uh, reminds you of something else, and then you'll just change the video. The video. <laughs> And then go to another video. I can agree to all of that, but, but I don't talk while the video is playing. Okay, but you also don't ask how we're all feeling about anything. Well, you all are giving <laughs> feedback. No one's like, I'm like, no one's paying We'll just skip and, to the next video. Oh my god, no. I think in summation, Bob and Kennedy have a lot of feelings, and Patty and I are just living in the moment. But well, we have not asked Patty what bothers what, what Patty what bothers Patty. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah. oh well. Bothers Kennedy. We just asked you. This might change. Oh, we are not done. <laughs> oh, keep going, Mary. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Like today, when I, you asked me to help you set something up, or oh, we're doing the, we're doing the, uh, the digital get down on the computer, you set it up and you told me to come over to help you, and then 
I just have to watch you struggle through it, and you don't take really any of my suggestions. Sometimes I'll I be take like, suggestions all the time. Click here, and you <laughs> click there, and then. So that's not not taking suggestions. Okay, sometimes, and then sometimes it'll like get you off onto this other tangent, so you're like starting to do stuff, and then I'll walk away, and you're like, no, 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 we're not done. Because we're not done. Yeah, but you're it, you have taken the wheel at that point, right? I'm not contributing anymore because you're like, oh, wait, muscle memory. But what if we I'm hit like, another wall? Yeah, then I'll come back. But okay, so then, and then as soon as, and then I, and then I express, well, if get you me, just let me, me click around, then I can probably figure it out. But it's hard to watch you do it without without being able to do it. And so then I'm walking away. You're getting mad at me, and then you get frustrated and you say, "I think it's your time to do this." And so then I get a second to do it. And well, what happens is we both take turns thing. trying to figure it out. I start one thing, and then you go, oh, 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 wait, I remember. I remember. Because I remembered. And then you take it back, and then you click one thing, and that's not it. And then we're back to square one of me trying to, like, walk away to, like, be productive on my I own. I think what's happening is and we're both just... taking turns trying to figure out the thing. So like, I'll have a turn at it, and then you'll have a turn at it, and then I'll have a turn, and then you'll have a turn. I guess I just felt like I didn't get my full turn. Well, you didn't express that. I, I feel like this Open has turned into a therapy session for Kennedy and Bob. Open and honest Monet and I are just mediators. Important. Yeah. Okay, Patty, what is my thing that I do? Um, I actually don't have that many, like, things. Wait, what? Well, I think probably one of my things is you love to tell me to do something, and I will be in the middle of doing it, and you will ask me to do another thing. You'll be like, oh, no, wait. I don't do that. You do do oh, that sometimes. Annoying. My mm. own, my other thing that I don't think I've ever told you is sometimes Ooh. we'll be we'll be like in the car at like three o'clock in the morning going to the airport and you'll play like Instagram videos out loud. Oh, you do that. my! We do. Let me and see it right now. You'll, you'll, it's you'll, not you'll like, like be scrolling through like stories like out loud. It's like three in the morning and we're like going to the airport and, all and they're I hear just is, like, videos, ah, short, ah, short little ah, videos. Ah, ah, and they're so die. loud. Youthful do. I feel like we're Work. all in agreement. On this. Everyone in the car is grumpy and tired. And Monet's in the corner and the video's like, ba ba da ba 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 I took a full 180. My anaconda don't. <laughs> and then she'll go back and watch it again. My anaconda don't. And then you're just and listening to And then it just keeps replaying. I, I, I and this is what I mean by like phone noises bother me. I always wear my headphones. And I'm like, I don't want my phone to be making noises so other people have to hear the noises my phone is making. I agree, and I appreciate that. So Monet's a bitch. Okay. All right, let's. Uh, <laughs> Monet's like, this is news to me. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can't see Monet, but she's over here. You know that grin you're making when you're mad, but you're acting like. <laughs> but it's like I hmm. am really not mad. <laughs> This has been a fun podcast. I'm not mad at all. Interesting. We've, Very interesting. Patty, uh, she's she's deleting Patty from her um, payroll. Um, well, I've I think been locked we, out of all of the accounts. <laughs> <laughs> I think we answered all the questions. Is there anything else we should talk about? I don't think so. Can we give a shout out to Kenneth um, Lee, Kenneth Friend? Oh, Kenneth. Kenny. Love Kenny. Kenny is, uh, used to be Jinx Monsoon's assistant. Kennedy is such a good I want to meet. And now he just uh he did work the world. He did uh blame it on Bianca, Bianca. or or clown yeah. what's, what's her show? Just a joke. Just a joke. Just, just the joke. He, he's done shows for Peaches Christ. He's an amazing I love assistant. Kenny. Shout out to Jamie, I love who is now Bianca's Kenny. manager, started off as her assistant. So Patty, recently I've seen on I was either Instagram or Twitter, and you it was a, face the mic. a selfie of you with uh Austin Zimmer, and the caption was work wives. So tell me, Patty, what is the truth? Who is your work wife? Wow, Nini. <laughs> well, I don't believe in conventional monogamous relationships. And uh, I think that we can have more than uh, one work partner. But uh, you also have to, I also need the date of that. Can you give me the date of that since you're bringing it up? Let me fact check this real quick. I can I can look into this because I think the last time Austin and I actually like physically worked together was L A DragCon. Right. It, it but was she loves. But I she still will, love she, her. 
And we she are loves work to post wives. stories from forever. You're like, oh, when was that? You're oh like, yeah, no, like, I mean, oh, no, she no, no. fully did post something from LA DragCon not too long ago. The time that she set her pants on fire in the microwave. Long story. What? I'm sorry. Awesome. No, no, you can't just skim over that. How I do you set your pants awesome. on fire in a microwave? She wanted to dry them off. So yeah. The so, so, so like something things. had happened. I can't remember. She like either like spilt something on it or like used water to like clean something. I don't remember what happened, but like she had this thought where she was like oh, I can just put it in the microwave to dry them quickly. <laughs> but there's metal in jeans and denim, and it fully caught right. on fire. But no one was like, that's a bad idea? We weren't there. I didn't see the jeans till after they had been burned. That is insane. That doesn't even make sense. And you want sense. her to be your work wife. You are also my work wife. We, I think, have, have uh, come to bond a little bit more closely because we have endured Vlad together. You know, Austin listens to this podcast. She's going to be very hurt. <laughs> we love Austin. She was I just love an Austin. idiot that one time. <laughs> With her fans. All right, well, thank you all so much for listening to our podcast today. Um, the, this is our first time having guests in a really long time. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, we, we have some more um, Draggers girls who will want to come back on, including some other, other celebrities who want to come back on. So we'll have guests uh, more frequently. We're, all right. Peace, everyone. I'll see. We have some Patreon exclusive questions coming up. So, see you on Patreon, losers. Do you have anything to say, Kennedy or Patty? Would you like to say before we leave? Hi, bye. Uh, Catch me on Instagram at Legal LegalMinor. Oh, I'm Kennedy. at Kennedy like the airport. I like your Kennedy one. The, the Bosnia system one is crunch. Because I don't do anything with it. All right. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. You can find me at on Instagram only um, at Kennedy at <laughs> the airport. I am not nowhere else to be to be found. Work. Alright, peace losers. Bye. Starbanks Avenue, a podcast <clears throat> a podcast network.